You are viewing the ATP ILS Approach Overview. This video depicts an ILS approach in a simulator using correct ATP procedures. In this example, the approach starts approximately 20 miles south of the Jacksonville Craig Airport, inbound for the ILS Runway 32. The ATIS should be tuned in as soon as possible to determine which approach is in use at the destination airport. Good airport destination Delta, 1748 Zulu weather, with 270, visibility 20, seating 5000 broken, temperature 17, altimeter 299. When descending for the approach, the throttles should be reduced to below 21 inches of manifold pressure. This helps keep the speed under control while setting up for the approach. Once the type of approach at the destination is determined, in this case, the ILS 32 at Jacksonville's Craig Airport, the pilot loads the approach into the Garmin 430. The final screen reminds the pilot that the GPS is not to be used for navigation on the approach. Instead, it can be used for situational awareness and monitoring purposes and for the missed approach if needed. The pilot conducts an approach briefing by reviewing the approach plate, placing special emphasis on the briefing strip. This is the ILS runway 32 into Jacksonville, Florida, Craig Municipal Airport. Index number 21-1, 21 April 2006. The localizer frequency is 111.7 with a final approach course of 319. Glide slope altitude at Adair is 1,800 with a decision altitude of 241 feet MSL, which is 200 feet above touchdown zone elevation. The airport and touchdown zone elevation is 41 feet with an MSA of 2100 feet. The missed approach will be a climb to 700, then a climbing right turn to 1900, outbound via the Craig VOR 139 degree radial to Adair intersection to hold using a teardrop entry. Adair is 5.4 DME from Craig. Radar or DME is required for this approach we have DME. Pilot controlled lighting is available on 132.1. This runway has a medium intensity approach light system and a PAPI on the left side, and we need a minimum of one half mile flight visibility to complete the approach. The scaling is then reduced down to 10 miles by pressing the range down key. With the approach briefing complete, the pilot completes the approach checklist. Approach checklist. ATIS, check. Approach briefing, complete. Altimeter, set. HSI is checked and set. Fuel selectors, on. Parking brake, off. Fuel pumps, on. Recog light on. In 79 model Seminoles, the landing light would be turned on. November 264 Alpha Tango, fly heading 350, maintain 2,000 vectors for the ILS 32 at Craig. Fly heading 350, maintain 2,000 Seminole 264 Alpha Tango. Once vectored for the ILS approach, the pilot tunes the ILS frequency to the active nav frequency window in the number one nav. The pilot then presses the CDI button on the Garmin 430 to change the CDI from GPS to VLOC, allowing the CDI to display localizer course guidance. The pilot twists the CDI needle to the inbound course and activates the approach on the Garmin 430. But remember, the approach is being flown using the localizer, not the GPS. The pilot is tracking the HSI CDI needle 
not the magenta line on the Garmin 430. The Garmin 430 is used only for situational awareness and to be prepared for the missed approach. At this point, it is likely that the airplane is not in a position to pick up a localizer identifier, as indicated by the red nav flag on the HSI. When in range of the localizer, indicated by the nav flag on the HSI pulling from view, the pilot presses the ID button on the GNS 430 to listen for the correct localizer ID. At 10 miles, the power is reduced to 15 inches of manifold pressure and the airspeed reduced to 100 knots. Do not, however, reduce the throttle so far that the gear horn sounds. As always, the gear horn is an action horn. Cow flaps are set. At the completion of the approach checklist, the pilot announces checklist complete and reviews all the callouts that will be made on the approach. The callouts that will be made on this approach will be localizer alive, glide slope alive, gear down before landing checklist, blue line gump, gear down stabilized, 100 to go, and minimums. When the localizer comes alive, the pilot announces localizer alive. Localizer alive. At two miles from the final approach fix waypoint, the pilot verifies that the scaling on the GPS changes from terminal to the approach scaling of 0.3 miles. When the glide slope comes off the upper limit of the HSI, the pilot announces glide slope alive. Glide slope alive. When one half dot below glide slope intercept, the pilot announces and performs gear down before landing checklist. Gear down before landing checklist. When extending the gear, the pilot's hand remains on the gear handle until the three green gear lights are illuminated. Three green. The flaps are extended to 25. Gear, three green. Fuel selectors on. Flaps, 25. Mixtures, forward. Props, forward. Fuel pumps, on. Once complete, the pilot announces checklist complete. Checklist complete. The added drag of gear and flaps will help the aircraft slow to 88 knots. The primary pitch instrument while tracking the glide slope is the VSI, and the primary control instrument is the attitude indicator. A stabilized approach corridor is required in ATP aircraft. The aircraft must be stabilized by 1,000 feet AGL for an ILS approach. General conditions for a stabilized approach require that the aircraft be in the landing configuration with gear down and final flap set. The airspeed must be stable and within a range of target airspeed to target airspeed plus 10 knots. At 1,000 feet AGL, in this case 1,041 feet, the pilot announces blue line gump and verifies the airspeed at 88 knots. Blue line gump, gas, undercarriage, mixtures, props. Engines must be steady at the proper approach power setting. Proper descent angle and rate of descent must be established and maintained. As the aircraft proceeds down the glide slope, the pilot is looking for a stable approach. This means making small movements of the yoke, producing small movements on the attitude indicator. Small changes must be made of heading and vertical speed to make the small corrections required. Again, as we proceed down the glide slope, the pilot is looking for the stable approach. This again means making small movements of the yoke, producing small movements on the attitude indicator. 